Hey guys, so I'm going to do a little video to get you hooked up to MongoDB Atlas, which is the cloud alternative to running our local MongoDB uh, database as we have right now. So if you haven't signed up, I hope you have, then you're going to click on this start free to get signed up, fill this in. I've already signed up, doesn't require a credit card as you see up here. So I'm going to sign in using my Code Immersive, Code Immersive's address. And password. Okay, and I'm logged in. Now, and it shows me this projects thing. Um, before I go into that though, I want to show you the docs. So if you look at the docs for getting started for MongoDB, it really walks you through what you need to do right down here in the table of contents. I'll just kind of summarize. First of all, we create the account, which we already did. Then we're going to deploy a free tier cluster. Uh, Mongo develops clusters for our database, which we'll see along the way. Along with that, we're going to have to connect our IP address. We'll have an option to either connect the IP address from which we're working, or we can uh, whitelist any other IP address that we want to as well. Then after that, we have to create a user and that user is going to be able to uh, reach and use the database. After that, we'll connect to our cluster and add the cluster to our local project that we've been working on, which in this case is the online shopper project. And then the part six inserting data is, uh, is we won't do that because that's kind of up to you if you want to do that or not. But for our purposes, we don't need to. Okay, so make sure you have your, uh, make sure you have your project up and running as before. And I'm going to go back to my page where I have the uh, projects here. So I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call it online or OShop to deploy like this. That's what I'm going to call it. Click next. You can add members and set permissions in a way that you want to right now. We're the only one or I'm the only one working on this project. So I'm not going to add anybody. I'm just going to create the project. Great. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to build a cluster. And when I do finally build this cluster, it's going to take a while. So I'll hopefully pause the video. If I haven't paused the video, then fast forward until it starts again. So I'm going to click on build a cluster. Here I'm going to be given three alternatives. For our purposes, we only need the shared clusters here, right? when we get into uh, developing for a real project that's going to be sold or something like that, we consider the other options. All right, so I click create a cluster. It automatically gives us the opportunity to connect to either AWS, Google Cloud Platform, or Azure. We're going to use an AWS instance here. So North Virginia is so these instances are hooked to servers. The servers are located in different parts of the, in this case, United States or Europe or Asia, however you might. So the closest one to us would be North Virginia, and that's why we would choose it. And it shows it for us based on our location coming from our uh, computers. Um, these other settings are default settings that we can leave as they are. Our cluster name, you can change your cluster name if you want to, you don't have to. You can change it for the one time if you want, it doesn't matter. Uh, I could call it OShop Cluster if I want. And then I'm going to click Create Cluster. Interesting, you may have to choose these. One, two, three, thumb. Not sure if I got all of them, I'll find out. Bridges, bridge, bridge, bridge. Is that it? I didn't get this before, but I'm getting it this time. So you may have to do that. Okay, here is where your cluster is being created and it could take from one to three minutes. So let's see how long it takes. Okay, so my clusters are about to be finished. As you can see up here, three of three servers complete. So in just a moment, 
this should uh, come into play and we should be able to see it. So the clusters, if you can imagine there are three servers being uh, created. Uh, if you're not into networking, then you don't know a lot about perhaps, or maybe you already do, a lot of you do, about uh, sharing the workload. So basically three clusters means that uh, the workload is shared over three different servers and it allows for uh, the capability to reach data faster. Let's just say that. If you don't know what it is, it's not that important right now. You'll learn that more in AWS as well. So now that we've created this cluster, I'm going to click Connect. Now, I need to add an IP address, as I mentioned earlier. I'm just going to add my current IP address. And then we also need to create a MongoDB user. This is different from the user that we signed in with. This is a user that we'll attach to the database itself, and we will use this user later. So I'm going to call my user JD, and I'm going to call my password. You're going to see it soon. It doesn't matter because I'll erase it after this video. And after I finish, I'm going to click Create MongoDB User. You'll need it for the credentials that you're going to see soon, OK? So I'm going to choose a connection method. There are several connection methods that we can use for our purposes. We're going to connect with our application. In this case, it's going to be our online shopper application. So I'm going to click there. And you see the driver's node. And here is the code that we'll need. We're going to have to fill in pieces of this code, but this is what we're going to need to place inside of our project. So now if I go to my project, into my .env, where I've placed the name of my database here. I'm going to erase this. This is our local instance of our Mongo database. And instead, I'm going to paste what I copied from MongoDB Atlas. Now, you'll see there's a long name here. We don't need to fill in this DB name, but we could. But we do have to fill in the password. And as I said, I'm going to erase this so I don't care that you're seeing it's JD123. That's going to be the password. And from there, I should now be able to connect to the database in my Mongo Atlas. And if all goes well, we once again see MongoDB connected just the same way as we did when we were connected to our local instance, right? So now I'm going to go to the project to make sure everything is going OK. Now remember, this is going to be empty right now because we don't have anything in this database. So I'm going to register all over again as I did earlier in uh, creating the app and creating the database. Two, three, four, five, six. Register. Hello, JDR. Uh, we don't have any categories, so I'll quick create a category. By the way, the project I'm using does not have a cart. It's before we did the cart, so you won't see a cart in the collections when we look. So I've added a category and it added 24 products. We have our drop down. Make sure everything is working. This is all working correctly. But more importantly, now when I go back to Mongo, so let's see. If I close this out, when I go back to Mongo, to my cluster here, I can click on collections, right? Because we have a we have collections in our database. It's going to retrieve all the collections that we have. Right now I have categories, which should have only one category, right? Shoes. This is what we normally use Robo3T for. Now we can use uh, MongoDB Atlas for this. Products, same thing. I should have 24 products here, right? And we see that all connected to shoes, sessions, and users as well, right? JD at me. So that's the way that we can use this. And we're going to need it because Heroku can use a uh, something called MLab right now. But in November, that's going to change. So better for you to know how to connect it with Mongo Atlas now so you, you don't have to make the adjustment in November for your projects. Um, and that's it as far as I can see. Anything else you can ask me in class. Later.